July is when we start living the dream of growing our own vegetables with delicious harvests every time we visit the plot. There's still plenty to do though, whether you're feeding and watering the crops you've already got, or you're sowing and planting extra ones for a late autumn harvest, or even going into winter and the following spring. For some useful greens next spring, it's time to sow spring cabbage in the greenhouse. Put it in modular trays and it'll be ready for planting out in September. Keep it well watered and protect it from pests. Pick cucumbers regularly. This will help them keep on fruiting. This variety here is a lovely half size one called Passandra, which as you see produces just the right size of fruit so you don't wind up with that half a cucumber rotting in the fridge. Make sure you keep your plants moist and feed them regularly. And when they reach the top of the greenhouse, just let them trail along or back down the sides. In a hot, humid greenhouse, tomatoes soon run riot. Now, there's lots of jobs to do to keep on top of them. First of all, make sure if you're growing a cordon variety to keep on taking out those side shoots which seem to sneak up on you and grow absolutely enormous. Then make sure you keep on attaching your plants to their supports and then when they're like this plant and they're touching the roof, it's time to take out the top and then that will concentrate all the energy in producing ripe fruits the whole length down the plant. There's no point in pushing it and trying to get too much from the plant, otherwise you'll have loads of green tomatoes come the autumn. Watering your tomatoes regularly is really important. There's a couple of problems that can occur when you don't water regularly. Their blossom end rot, where you get that horrible black bottom to the fruits, and that's because calcium has got locked up in the soil and isn't getting to the plant. And then you can also get split fruit, where the fruit has got all dry and contracted, and then when you watered, it's swollen up quickly, and then it's too much for the plant, and the fruit splits open, and you've got horrible, messy fruit. Now when you are watering, make sure you feed your tomatoes with a liquid tomato food about twice a week. Now that the peppers have started flowering, it's time to give them a regular feed of tomato food. Just pour it into the water and dissolve it and then as you water, you'll be feeding too. The joy of growing your own courgettes is that you can pick them when they're just about 15 centimetres in length, which is a really beautiful tender vegetable at this size. You'll never get them that small at the supermarket unless you're prepared to pay a lot of money. The other thing you can enjoy are stuffed courgette flowers. Look for the male ones like this, which don't have a fruit developing at the base and then you can fill them with all sorts of delicious things and then keep them in the fridge, deep fat fry them maybe with a light batter, they're really tasty. Now, if you've got courgettes and they're a yellow fruited variety, don't worry if the leaves look like this. They haven't got a virus, it's just what happens with the yellow fruited types, so nothing to worry about there. The only other thing to think about with courgettes is to keep on picking the fruit, even if you don't really want to have some right now and you're just going to pop it in the compost heap. If you keep picking, you won't get those massive marrows and you'll get a constant supply of the lovely tender little fruits just like that. When your broad beans and peas have finished harvesting, it's time to cut down the stems and throw them in the compost heap. Make sure you leave the roots in the ground though as they'll be fixing nitrogen which will help feed the next crop. The first of the tender veg that we planted back in the late spring are now ready to be picking. These dwarf beans are fantastic, you get a huge crop but be careful as with all these leaves it's very easy to miss the masses of beans that are forming beneath. As soon as early crops such as broad beans and peas have been cleared, you can get in there and get another crop for summer or even sow one for winter. Hoe off any weeds and scatter some general purpose fertiliser. Our best buys are Vitax Q4 and Grow More. Give the ground a thorough soaking if it's dry. The soil should be warm enough to sow tender crops direct too. You may see potatoes for Christmas on sale in July, but when which gardening trialled these, we found that they're likely to get hit by a disease called potato blight that wipes out the crop. If you can find seed potatoes of a blight-resistant variety such as Sharpo Mira, then give these a try instead. Blight is a devastating disease that affects both 
potatoes and tomatoes that are being grown outside. From early July onwards, keep a check of the leaves and look out for symptoms such as small brown patches beginning to appear. These ones are clean still, but you need to keep an eye on them, particularly after a few days with warm, humid nights, as those are the conditions that blight really enjoys. Now, if blight does hit your crop, there's not a lot you can do to help tomatoes, but with potatoes, it's worth cutting off all of the stems at the base and then throwing away the stems, putting them in the bin, and then wait about two weeks and then you can harvest all the potatoes and they should be fine. They do keep out for any signs of rotting. Once the early potato varieties have finished, you can move on to the second early, such as Jazzy or Charlotte. Pick them as soon as you eat them and then the main crops will be coming in the autumn for storing. Now do keep an eye out for those signs of blight though and if it strikes, be prepared to harvest all of them once you've cut off the foliage and waited two weeks.